All right, baby. Five minute lessons. Acceleration time. Okay, acceleration uh, is a measurement in the change of velocity over time. Acceleration is a vector, so it does have magnitude and direction. Okay, so um, it's change in velocity over change in time. Sometimes you'll see that as v2 minus v1 over t2 minus t1. But it's just important to understand that I could be going 10 miles an hour, and then in, over the course of time, now I'm going 20 miles an hour. I have accelerated. I've changed my velocity. So what are these units? Well, if velocity is measured in, like, uh, say, meters per second or miles per hour, Okay, well, this would be miles per hour per hour or meters per second per second. Okay, so acceleration is measured in meters per second per second or meters per second squared or miles per hour squared. So it's going to take you some time to buy into that and to even really understand what that means. But just give it time. Okay, so how do we use it? This is like your, your typical first problem. A car accelerates at 3 meters per second squared for 10 seconds. What will the speed of this car be after 10 seconds? Well, let's think about it from a graph here, okay? This is going to be a linear graph. And um, if this is time down here, this is what's going on here. And our y-intercept here would be 10. So after one second, okay, our acceleration is 10. After 10 seconds, our acceleration is 10. So it seems like it's constant, but now look at it from a velocity standpoint. Now it becomes y equals 10x. And here, after 10 seconds, um, I'm sorry, y equals 3x. Y equals 3x. And after 10 seconds, you can see that we'll be going 30 miles or 30 meters per second. Okay? So how many meters did it travel during this time? Well, this is actually not that easy of a question because it's not like they were going 30 meters per second the entire time. Okay, so we're actually going to come back to the answer to this question. This is not as easy as you would think to answer. So we'll come back to that a little, a little bit later, okay? Now we're going we're gonna to get in over our heads a little bit, but it's going to be worth it, okay? You're going to start to understand why calculus is needed. So now you're looking at a re more realistic graph. So now we've got acceleration mapped over time. Okay. So let's say that um, for the first one, and we're going to measure acceleration in meters per second squared, and we're going to measure time in seconds. That's going to be important. Okay. So let's say this is one here. Let's just say even it doesn't look like it. Two, three, and four, even though I didn't do a good job, let's just say those are equal seconds down here on the bottom, okay? And you can see where our acceleration is changing at different rates throughout this period of time. So let's say this is uh, 1, 0.5 here, and then that makes this 2, 0.5 there. And then let's say this is uh, 3, 3, it jumped big, and then maybe it finishes at... 4, 4, okay? So we had different accelerations during different periods, which is really how, you, how most things work. Well, instead of like diving deep into this, and what I want you to understand is that there are some simple geometric properties to this that are going to be important. So what would happen if we multiplied our time times our acceleration, okay? Well, it would kind of give us the area underneath this 
granted, the triangles would have different area than rectangles, and rectangles might have different area than trapezoids. But you're going to end up with area under this. So let's take a look at our units. What happens when we multiply meters per second squared times seconds? What do we get? Well, this cancels with this, and you end up getting meters per second. Well, what do we measure in meters per second? Well, what do we measure in meters per second? Well, that's velocity. So believe it or not, if you want to know how fast this car is going after four seconds or this object, what you have to do is you have to find the area underneath that curve. Okay, well, as it turns out in calculus, um, we don't have to just do straight lines. We're going to end up being able to find the area under actual smooth curves. And that was one of the reasons we needed to construct calculus. It wasn't exactly created or invented, but it was constructed so that we could start to answer questions like this. But it, there's a lot of implications of that. All right, so finally, what does this have to do with gravity? Well, we're all here. Uh, we're all standing on Earth, um, and we're all being affected by gravity. Gravity is, like, super complex. Nobody completely understands it, like, not even your, your, your best physicist. Um, but there are some things about gravity on Earth that we completely understand. One is that the gravitational force on Earth is 9.8 eight meters per second squared. That is a constant. So what does that mean? Well, let's go back to our graph. Um, if again, this acceleration graph over time due to gravity is constant. It's 9.8. But what if we change that? What if we changed it to velocity from gravity over time? Well, if I, if I'm holding something, and then I drop it, gravity immediately takes its, its effect. And I, I hope that you realize or you thought about, but if not, that's no problem. Its velocity is going to increase. This is why it's illegal to drop a penny off the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower, because by the time it gets to the ground, it's going to be going much, much faster. Now, if you are into physics, maybe you're realizing, like, hold on, that's not right. Well, you might be right. Actually, there is some diminished returns because of this thing called error resistance. And once this starts to flatten out, maybe you'll recognize that's called terminal velocity. But in general, the velocity is increasing at a rate of 9.8. That's the slope of this line. This is the line y equals 9.8x. And, and you can follow that line to figure out how fast something will be going in meters per second at what time. Now, it is a little more complicated than that, but that's enough to get you started, enough to make you dangerous with gravity. I hope this helps. Boom!